Hello and welcome back to the workshop. I've got a great little tool to show you in this video and it produces the most amazing fake beams and I just cannot get over how good it is. Now the tool in question is called a Mitolock cutter. This is a Trend Mitolock cutter. A Trend have been supporting me with the channel and they've sent me this tool to have a go with and use for this project. So I cannot thank them enough, but I don't want that to be an influence for your viewing on this video as to why I'm doing this video. I was literally gonna buy this cutter anyway. So the fact they've sent it to me is just a great thing for me to be honest and, and really good to have their support and it's not an influence at all in any of the content in this video or the reason why I've made this video. This is truly a great piece of kit. Now the cutter will turn two flat boards, so two flat pieces of wood, into a perfect 90 degree corner just like this. And if you put four pieces of wood together, you obviously get a perfect beam. Now that's not any different from mitering the four corners with a bevel and clamping it around a beam. Now the special thing about this cutter is that you can actually clamp this together easily. So a traditional mitre through a joint like that over a long board is incredibly difficult to actually clamp that joint together and clamp it across and locate it accurately and get a tight joint down a, a long length of timber. Whereas this cutter actually has a little tooth in it in the joint profile. So if I hold that up to the camera, and this is the important bit here, and that allows you, basically when you've machined this in the two orientations that we're going to show you, you can clamp that joint together on them two 45 degree corners across this board. So you can actually have a clamp across there and it will pull the mitre nice and tight which opens up all sorts of opportunities for boxing in and boxing around steels that you can do on site and you can do accurately which you couldn't do before so like i say for long sections like we're going to be doing today it makes the clamping process really nice and easy that's what we're looking to produce for this job a similar section to this we've just got half of a box because it's going to be cladding a beam that sits between two windows and this is the cutter we're going to be using. So let's get straight into it and have a look at the job we're going to be doing. So the box beam that I'm making is to cover the steel beams here on this extension. I'm using my laser level to measure accurately so that my beams end up the right size once scribed and completely level. I'll do an in-depth video on measuring up with a laser level in the future. The basic principle of it involves setting the laser line in the plane of the finished item then using that perfect level and flat line to measure all the relevant positions. So in effect, it just gives you the ultimate reference surface. So you know before starting making the project that the item will actually fit exactly in that space once scribed. The material I'm using for this job is American oak that the customers had in stock in their garage. They saved this for a few years, so it's fairly dry, but obviously the garage is at sort of an outside ambient moisture. So I've cut this to size, it was originally two inch, and then I've stored it in my container and acclimatized it to an internal room temperature over the last couple of months. This should mean that any movement from acclimatization, once the item has been installed, should be reduced to an absolute minimum. After planing the timber flat and edging the sides so that I've got nice straight and flat boards, moved on to the spindle moulder, adding a false fence because in the machining process of this particular cutter, we have to machine one board with it against the fence in a vertical position and one board with it horizontal. So the extra support across the gap in the fences is going to be really important. In regards to setting up the cutter, this can be fairly tricky. The easiest way that I've found is to set the centre part of the tooth flush with the bed and then because my spindle has got a digital readout, raise the cutter up half the thickness of the timber that I'm using. Once this is set, you can then only worry about the depth of the fence setting and a very fine tuning to the height if necessary. Bloody hell, that looks pretty much spot on. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, 
want to put them together. That is pretty damn close to being the perfect joint. Just, just the vertical board here, which is machined vertically, is just a little bit protruding past the horizontal board. So, in order to fix that cut, because they're machined in this direction, they're machined like this. So, to bring that board down a little bit, you've obviously got to bring this cutter down, which should affect, which will affect, because it's on a 45 degree cut, the depth of the cut. So I'll just, I'll just nip it down about 0.2 of a mil. Yeah, 0.3. And I'll add a little bit more depth of the cut on the fences. I can't believe how easy that set up. Sometimes you can fiddle about with that cutter for ages getting that set up, but one adjustment and it's absolutely perfect. Look at that. So, like I did, the reference for the centre of the bed, if you've got a digital or some form of measuring the cutter height, I just took this point here on the actual cutter and leveled it with the bed and then raised it up half the thickness of the timber, raised the cutter up and that set my height pretty much spot on and then just work the piece back until you get the same amount of timber left on the corner on both pieces. So I've set that pretty fine. There's a little square of timber on both pieces that is just, just uncut and that's going to allow me to run the boards through without them cutting away to a new edge and it dropping on the bed. So that as you run the vertical board through the spindle, if you machine away the bottom edge, obviously that's gonna then fall into the cutter towards the end of the cut. So I just leave that tiny little bit of unmachined wood on the edge and everything runs through nice and smooth. So I just need to check which orientation I'm running these through on, because the idea is that I can clamp these up with normal clamps across this board. So if I look at my test piece here, I want to be able to clamp the board in this direction here. So you put pressure across that joint. So I'm gonna to need to run this board through on the horizontal. So it's running on the surface of the spindle molder and these two boards are gonna be running through in the vertical. Right, so you'll be extra, extra careful with these uh, feather edges on these boards now that they're machined. But if we take this one, which is the double one, and put the sides on it, just by pushing it together, you can see how good this looks. So, three individual little bits of wood clamped together. just like a solid oak beam. I've got to be honest, when that's physically clamped and glued, 
There is no way other than going up to it and getting it getting about two centimetres away from the surface and looking at the joint. There's no way you can tell that that is not a solid beam. All right, time to glue this up. I've got a couple of blocks. So I've clamped this all together nice and tight. Then I've cut a couple of blocks so that they're about half a mil narrower than when it's clamped together the tight setting. And that should just allow me to keep the walls of this U-shaped box nice and square as they clamp up. And equally I've got some panels that are keeping the workshop anyway with some pocket hole screws in that will keep this angled piece nice and square as well. So I just take it to bits, clamps are all ready, I've got clamps to pull it down onto the bench and I'm all prepared. So it should go pretty well. Gently pull it together. And then it's pretty nice and flush. That glue squeeze, it's bonny. Wunderbar. Yeah, there we go. I popped a bloody blood vessel in my finger while I was clamping out, so I got about the clamping pressure of a gnat. <laughs> Left hand came to the rescue, and she's nicely clamped up so it's got about the right amount of glue squeeze really you don't need to spread the pu glue in a joint like that you can just put one bead down and then there's nowhere for it to go so it has to squeeze through the joint i just put like the one bead there and in the opposite place on the other side it squeezes through the joint quite nicely but generally they are pretty nice and square nice and straight and these are, these are really handy, I'm always using these for glue ups. So just knock the corner off so the glue doesn't get on the on the square surfaces. And then you can either clamp them or just put the pocket hole screws on the inside if it's not seen. It holds everything nice and square uh, down the board. So a pretty handy tip. So we'll let that go off and then we'll unclamp it and clean the faces up. Put my feet up there and have a cup of tea after I've glued that together. When I was finished, I thought probably should have bit of, put a bit of cellophane between the two because if any glue squeeze got in that gap, they could have stuck, stuck the two beans together. So I might be cutting that apart in a minute on the bandsaw. Give me a little bit of glue look. Next time, put a bit of cellophane between your two bits. Ooh la la. That is so satisfying. To run the chisel down that glue line. Two bits of wood. And we come one. Even if we get the camera like right in there on the joint. It looks beautiful.
Right, so that's some machining done. Let's head back over to site and get them cut in. Before we do that, just a quick look at the actual joint. You see that it's lovely. It's a lovely joint. Nice and strong across that mitre. You can barely make out where the glue line runs. You see the bit of planing here is just tapered off, but you don't see it on the outside. It's absolutely perfect. Really chuffed. That cutter is bloody brilliant. Back on site with the beams, I'm setting up a laser level across the room and casting a horizontal line across the location of where I'm stalling the box. I then measure up and down from the horizontal line to mark the cuts on the beam. In this case, the floor was level, so I just marked a line up from the bottom of the beam to the height from the floor to the line and then used the laser line to measure up to the ceiling points on all four corners and marked them from that square line on my timber. This is a very simple way of getting an accurate cut all the way around the box work without any guessing and should mean that the beam fits in place on the first attempt if you cut accurately to the line. Apologies about the camera, I was battling a little bit with really bright light coming through the windows but also trying to focus on the beam which seems to be quite dark compared. I use the same principle measuring from that level line for marking out the position of the socket locations. And then use the jigsaw to cut them out. I find myself using the jigsaw an awful lot more since doing that modification. Once the beam is sat in place, it's just then a case of aligning it with the windows across the front and scribing the sides back so it's sat flush. To hold the back of the boxing in, I scribe some blocks of timber in place to fix to and make it level. I taped all the joints and fixed in place with some OB1 sealant. I added foam in the gaps to stop any air movement and a little along the face to stop it sounding so hollow if you were to tap it. To pull this boxing back tight to the window frames, I drilled the steel in the back of the socket boxes and used a 100mm screw and a block of wood to pull it back. This worked really well.
I didn't use my normal masking tape and this turned out to be disastrous as the sealant squeezed underneath it. I managed to clean it all up fine, but my Friday lunchtime pork cob was cold by the time I managed to eat it. The beam that sits in the corner I couldn't fix back with the same method, so I happened to have some of my zip wall poles on site, so I managed to apply enough pressure from the springs in them in each direction to hold it in place. There we have it, that is the oak finished. I'm really impressed with that cutter block. It literally looks like one piece of wood. If you tell someone it's two bits and they walk up to it and try and really inspect it up close, they pretty much don't believe you. It does look like a single piece of wood, so you, you can't really get better than that. But yeah, they fitted in really well. We've got the oak beam in the corner, so it looks like part of a, a sort of a oak post or a green oak extension and then painted in this side to match everything else in the house. So sort of finishes that window off quite nicely. If you'd have done oak on this side as well, there wasn't the depth to get any sort of size post, so it just looked a bit weird with a narrow strip of oak. But that was looking pretty good. And then in the centre over here, this one looks really good as well. So it's quite a good match in with the oak doors. And like I say, it looks like an oak, oak beam. You wouldn't question that that isn't a solid piece of oak in between the two doors there. So hope you've enjoyed this one and I'll see you next time.